I've been asked to um, speak about one of the greatest of men to walk on the face of this earth and due to it being that Muharram al-Haram begins with his martyrdom inshallah it will be appropriate for all of us hailing from the Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah adherents of the Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah who on the one hand we have extreme alhamdulillah love for the Ashab of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the same time we also alhamdulillah love the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rather for the Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah anything or anyone which has even the slightest connection with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we are obliged to respect that item respect that personality and hold utmost reverence for that personality because of their connection with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam inshallah very briefly I'm going to talk about Amir al-Mu'mineen Khalifatu Khalifati Rasulillah Sayyiduna Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardah um, lives would be exhausted pens would dry out papers would run out no one would be able to fully encompass the merits and the excellences and the virtues of this great man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala as a preliminary to my very short speech inshallah what we need to understand is this the companions of the Prophet sallallahu you know when we speak to the youth and we ask them what is your ardent wish they say if only I was in the time of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa of course what a beautiful wish this is and I hope this is this wish is kindled in the hearts of every single person amongst the youngsters every single youth but remember one thing the ashab did not become ashab on account of their own doings they were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu said in a famous hadith Inna Allah akhtarani wa akhtara li ashab faj'ala minhum wuzara'a wa ashaba wa ashara wa a'wana Allah chose me Allah selected me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected from amongst the people my companions from amongst them they made he made azza wa jal from amongst them he made those who became my father-in-laws my son-in-laws of, of course the ulama do mention that it is we should not refer to Sayyidina Abu Bakr or Sayyidina Umar as a father-in-law. This is just a uh, additional merit to him, but the title father-in-law should not be used for the mess for these uh, shaykhain karimain. This is uh, again a matter of respect that the ulama have mentioned. Nonetheless, the Prophet said, Allah chose my companions for me. And from amongst those companions who were chosen, there is one man whom the Prophet ﷺ sought from Allah, made dua that, Oh Allah, give me this man. Who is this man? This is Umar ibn Khattab. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allahumma a'izzil Islam bi ahad al Umarain. Wa fi riwaya, Allahumma a'izzil Islam bi Umar ibn Khattab khasatan. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strengthen Islam strengthen Islam through one of the two who are the most beloved to you either Amr ibn Hisham yani Abu Jahl or Umar ibn Khattab and this dua was answered in the favor of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab and the famous incident you all know about his conversion to Islam there is however one narration I would like to mention to you Allahu Akbar Durushi pray Allah Masalli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin Ma'adhan Jude wal Karami wa Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Barik wa Salli wa Salli Alim. You know how much honor and Izza Islam was given through Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Allahu Akbar. There is one narration, one hadith that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Baraka wa Salli wa said this is on the authority of Sayyidina Imran ibn Hussain radiyallahu ta'ala who says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ وَحُشِرَ النَّاسِ 
جاء عمر بن الخطاب فيقف في الموقف فيأتيه شيء أشبه به جب قيامت کا دن ہوگا انہوں نے اسلام کے لئے کیا کیا خدمات پیش کی Orientalists, non-Muslims would say if there was if Muslims had another Umar ibn Khattab the entire world would be subdued to Islam would be subservient to Islam because remember in those times in those days they didn't waste their time Okay, and I, and I keep on telling this to my students, Aman, you probably vouch for this, but I keep on telling my students, you know, you, we need to be serious. We were in, you know, for example, just recently, last week, we were in uh, Istanbul. We, alhamdulillah, were honored to visit uh, many shrines, but in particular, the shrine, the blessed shrine of Sultan Muhammad Al-Fatih II, Rahimahullah, the one who conquered Istanbul, Qustuntuniya, at the age of 21. At what age? Who's more than the age of 21? Who's younger than, who's 21? Who's, who's around the 20s? MashaAllah, SubhanAllah. Yeah, Taha. At that age, this young Ottoman Sultan and the Prophet already said, okay, لَتُفْتَحُنَّ الْقُسْتُنْتُنِيَّةِ فَلَنِعْمَ الْأَمِيرُ أَمِيرُهَا وَلَنِعْمَ الْجَيْشُ ذَاكَ الْجَيْشِ The Prophet ﷺ said, Constantinople will be conquered. How great will be that leader and how good will be that army. That was, Nur Muhammad is there, mashallah. Allah bless you. Subhanallah. Yes, Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih. In those days, I'm talking about the youth today and the youth then. Sayyidul Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh also embraced Islam at what age? At the age of 21. Look at how much he gave for Islam. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh says, مَا زِلْنَا أَعِزَّةً مُنْذُ أَسْلَمَ عُمَر We continuously remained mighty. Our strength and glory remained high since the day Umar ibn Khattab embraced Islam. The first time Muslims were able to perform salah openly was on the day Umar ibn Khattab embraced Islam What will happen in Yawm al-Qiyamah? I was mentioning that hadith. He says, the Messenger Sallallahu said, when it will be the day of reckoning? وَحُشِرَ nas. Mankind will gather, mankind will be resurrected and they will gather in the plane of gathering before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ja'a Umar ibn Khattab fayaqufu fil mawqifi fayatihi shay'un ashbahu bih. Sayyidun Umar radiallahu ta'ala will stand in the mawqif in the plane of standing. And there he will be approached by something which will be very similar, which will have a very keen resemblance to him. Something or someone will come to him which will appear very similar to him, to Umar ibn Khattab himself. Which will have very keen resemblance to Umar. Imagine like a mirror in front of you. Something, a mirror image of, of yours coming personified in, to you. That being, whatever it may be, as we'll learn later on, will say, O oh Umar, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you abundantly. فَيَقُولُ لَهْ مَنْ أَنْتَ Amir al-Mu'mineen Sayyidina Umar will ask, Who are you? Tu koon hai? Ya tu kya hai? فَيَقُولُ أَنَا الْإِسْلَامِ That thing will say, I am Islam. I am the religion of Islam. I am the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am the ultimate religion about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna deen عند الله Islam, The only deen and religion in the sight of Allah which is accepted is the deen of Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلِنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهِ Anyone who chooses a religion other than Islam, it will be rejected. Allah will not accept it. I am that religion, the religion of Islam. Jazakallahu ya Umaru khayran. May Allah reward you abundantly on behalf of us. O Umar. Thumma yunadi munadin. Ala la yudfa'anna li ahadin kitabun hatta yudfa'a li Umar ibn al-Khattab. Thumma yu'ata kitabahu bi yameenihi. Wa yu'maru bihi ila al-jannah. Fabaka Umar. Wa'ataqa jami'a ma kan yamliku wa kanu tis'a. Allahu Akbar. 
The Prophet was narrating this hadith to Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala Islam will say, well, Oh Umar, may Allah reward you abundantly. And then what will happen on the day of reckoning? A herald will call and will say, No one will be given their record of deeds until Umar will be the first to be given his record of deeds. He will see his record of deeds filled with hasanat, filled with good deeds. Allahu Akbar. On all of us, the entire Muslim Ummah, we are but a single deed from the deeds of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. And then he will be ordered, instructed to go to Jannah, subhanallah. On hearing this hadith, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala had nine slaves whom he emancipated, he freed upon hearing this glad tidings from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is much to be said, but let me just finish with one narration. A beautiful narration, Allahu Akbar. If only we had leaders like this. And as you know about Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu Amirul Mu'mineen. And I keep on telling this. Today we have an egotistical problem. We are hungry for fame. Greedy to become famous. To be known. Sayyidina Amirul Mu'mineen Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah mentions this. Each night after patrolling the streets of Al-Madinatul Munawwara, he would go in a derelict house, in an abandoned house, in the outskirts of Al-Madinatul Munawwara with a whip. And he would strike himself on the foot and he would say you to himself, to the nafs. We are talking about pure souls here. We are talking about people who are stationed at the highest level of tasawwuf, of qurb of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That tasawwuf comes from them. He was striking his foot with a whip and by way of self-examination and vigilance, he would say, are you the one whom people refer to with the titles Amir al-Mu'mineen? What face will you show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he holds you account for such and such a sin that you committed on such and such a day? Holding himself to account. He is the one who, sell, who himself says, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Bring yourselves to account before you are brought to account on Yawm al -Qiyam. Think about what you have done in your past. How in futile um, uh, entertainment and in futile pursuits we have wasted our youth. Bring yourself to account before it's too late. Hasibu anfusukum qablan tuhasabu. When leaders were people who kept their nafs in check, who were extremely humble. As our master Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Jailani radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, I knocked on all the doors to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but I found them overcrowded with people. The door of giving in charity was filled with people giving in charity. The door of fasting, the door of salah, the door of recitation of the Quran, the door of supererogatory acts of worship, they were filled with people. Overcrowded, but I knocked on one door which was completely empty and that was the door of humility and humbleness and khidma of the khalq. So I entered through that and I surpassed all of them in reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humbleness and humility. The same that goes with Imam al Hussein and Yazid alayhi ma alayhi. Imam al Hussein, an embodiment of humbleness and humility and the prophetic character. And on the other hand, you have Yazid greed, greedy for fame. At, and extremely greedy to become a leader to an extent that he did not pay the slightest concern to the noble skins and descendants of the prophetic household, the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa allowed them to be brutally martyred and killed on the plains of Karbala. Why? Because he was extremely greedy. Hirs, covetousness and greed will kill a person. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, No two wolves that are let loose on a flock of sheep cause greater damage 
than the love of this ephemeral world and covetousness and greed causes damage to one's deen. Lalach, hirs, ananiyat, nafs, these are destructive elements. Allahu Let us look at Amir al Mu'mineen. How did he become Amir al Mu'mineen at the greatest level, at the greatest rank that no one will ever achieve? Let me read to you this narration how they were. Khidmah of the deen. Khidmah of the deen doesn't really mean just, doesn't just mean just we come here for salah, attend one program every year. Subhanallah, cry and shed a few tears. Subhanallah, we paid our service and tribute to the Ahlul Bayt. It is for us to change our character, to become the true servants that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands us to be. This is Sayyidina Aslam radiallahu ta'ala, one of the servants of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. I'm going to finish inshallah with this. وعن أسلم أن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تنطى فليلة فإذا هو بمرأة في جوف دار لها وحولها صبيان يبكون. سيدنا عمر رضي الله تنطى as I said every night he would patrol the streets of Al Madin to Munawwara to see the needs of his subjects. Who is in need? Is there anyone who needs help that I can help them? Because he was extremely, extremely fearful of the account that I've been made. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the leader of the faithful, he would actually say, if a sheep dies, a goat dies at the brink of the river Tigris, I, Umar ibn Khattab, will be held accountable for that. About a goat or a sheep. So he would be patrolling the streets of al madid Munawwara during the night. And then one day he went, one night he went past and he went past the house of a woman. Around her were her children who were crying. There was a cauldron, a pot that she had filled with water. It was on, on the fire. It was being cooked. He had veiled himself. She was not able to recognize him. So he asked, Oh, the bonds, bondswoman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are these children crying? She replied, O oh man, my children are crying because of the extremity of hunger that they are feeling. Because of the pangs of hunger. Here we are not even sated with four meals every single day. Huh? This is our nafs. My children are crying because of the extremity of their hunger that they are feeling. So he asked, what is this cauldron, this pot that is on the fire that is being cooked? He asked, what is this pot? She replied, there is nothing in this pot except for water. I am cooking this, I am boiling this water, cooking this water in order to kind of let them assume that there is something in it so that they can go to sleep. So that they do not remain crying for food. At least I can divert their attention away from the hunger and, made them, and put them to sleep to try and make them assume that there is something that is being cooked for them. Allah what happens? Sayyidina Umar began to cry. This is Sayyidina Umar that in his own word, the word Umar itself, grammatically speaking, those students of the sacred knowledge, you will know that Umar, one of the awsaf or one of the ways in which why it is known as a diptode, ghair munsarif, is because it, it has the factor of Adl, yes, Adl. What does Adl literally mean? Justice. Even if in his name, justice is manifest. This Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu is weeping. Thumma jaa ila dari sadaqati. He himself, he didn't send his servants, his associates to go to the treasury, the Muslim treasury. He himself went to the Muslim treasury. Wa akhadha ghiraratan. He took a sack. وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا شَيْءٍ مِّن دَقِيقٍ وَسَمَّنٍ وَشَحْمٍ وَتَمَّرٍ وَثِيَابٍ وَدَرَاهِمَ حَتَّى مَلَأَ الْغِرَارَةِ 
He took the sack, filled it with flour, with dates, with clarified butter, with clothes, with coins, with money. ثُمَّ قَالِ يَا It's extremely heavy. It was extremely heavy, you can understand. ثُمَّ قَالَ يَا أَسْلَمْ إِحْمِلْ عَلَيَّ He said to his own Khadim servant, put this sack on my back, on my shoulders. Who is this? Amirul Al-Mu'mineen, no Mufti, no Alim, no Peer, no Shaykh, not even MBS can enjoy the great rank that Amirul Al-Mu'mineen enjoyed. He is the Khadim of the people. That's why Allah made him Sayyidul Qawm. Sayyidul Qawmi Khadimuhum. Put this back. Put this uh, sack on my back. فَقُلْتُ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنَا أَحْمِلُهُ عَنْكِ Sayyidul Aslam said, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mini, I will carry it on your behalf. Why are you enduring the hardships of carrying this heavy sack on your back? I will, I am your Khadim. فَقَالَ لِي لَا أُمَّ لَكْ يَا أَسْلَمْ أَنَا أَحْمِلُهُ لِأَنِّي أَنَا الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ You will not carry it, O Aslam. I will carry it. You will not be questioned regarding them. I am مَسْؤُولُ عَنْهُمْ I am responsible for them. I am their shepherd. I will be questioned regarding them. So I will carry it. فَحَمَلَهُ حَتَّى أَتَى بِهِ مَنْزِلَةَ الْمَرْأَةِ He then carried the sack. All the way until the house of that woman. He didn't just leave it. Okay. Deliveroo. Just put it at the, in front of the house. Khalas. Job done. Na. فَأَخَذَ الْقِدْرِ He took the cauldron. وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا دَقِيقًا وَشَيْئًا مِنْ شَحْمٍ وَتَمَّرٍ وَجَعَلِ يُحَرِّكُ بِيَدِهِ وَيَنْفُخُهُ تَحْتَ الْقِدْرِ Sayyidina Umar, Amir al-Mu'mideen, radiyallahu ta'ala an, about whom the Prophet said, if, Hypothetically speaking, there was going to be a prophet after me. If there was going to be a prophet after me, it would have been Umar ibn Khattab Obviously, if Sayyidina Umar cannot be a prophet, how can the guy who dies on a toilet be a prophet? Nonetheless, that's besides the point. Let us continue. So, Sayyidina Umar and he takes the sack of flour he puts the flour into the cauldron of pot and mixes it with the clarified butter, with the dates and begins to mix it with his own blessed hands. What does he also do? In order to keep the stove kindled, he blows underneath the pot so that it remains ignited. Sayyidun Aslam says, فَرَأَيْتُ الدُّخَانَ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ خِلَالِ لِحْيَتِهِ I saw smoke coming through his blessed beard. He was cooking the food for these children. Not those people who will spend billions on artillery and ammunition to destroy Muslims. Whilst there are people starving in their own countries. These traitors of Islam who have sold Yabi'oon al-Deen bi'ardi min al-Dunya. Who have sold their religion for a bit of materialistic gain. Khasir al-Dunya wal-Akhirah for them. They have lost this dunya and the Akhirah. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala he then cooks the food. ثُمَّ جَعَلَ يَغْرِفُ He doesn't just stop there. ثُمَّ جَعَلَ يَغْرِفُ بِيَدِهِ وَيُتْعِمُهُمْ حَتَّى شَبِعُوا He then makes morsels of food and begins to feed the children with his own blessed hands. ہم تو سمجھ دے بیس پاؤن دے دی ہیں قربانی کے قربانی ہو گئی زکاة دے دی 2.5% ہو گئی Khidmat al-Khalq is a different level, brothers and sisters, listen to me. He fed all of them until they were satiated. Thumma kharaja wa rabada bihid. He didn't stop there. He then goes out and lies down next to the children. Hatta ka'anna usab'oon. He begins to play with them as though he's like a lion. He plays with them. He entertains them. Wa khiftu an ukallimu. At that moment in time, Sayyidina Aslam says, I... I had this awe, I was awestruck, I couldn't even speak to him. فَلَمْ يَزَلْ كَذَلِكَ حَتَّى لَعِبَ الصِّبْيَانُ وَضَحِكُوا He continued playing with the children until they began to laugh. They had a smile on their faces. These leaders were concerned to put a smile on the faces of the orphans, of the young children, of those who were bereft of and deprived of even the basic necessities in life. 
Not that you have a multi-million pound mansion and you've got chicken and everything coming your way. Just give, who gives a damn about what's happening in your country? They weren't leaders like this. He put a smile on their faces. Then he said, Amir al-Mu'mineen said to Sayyidina Aslam radiyallahu anhu, Atadri lima rabattu bihidha'ihim? Oh Aslam, do you know why I laid down next to them? Okay, tried to entertain them. Qultula, I said no. Qala ra'aytum yabkoon. When I entered their house, I saw them crying. I saw these young children, innocent children crying. فَكَرِهْتُ أَنْ أَذْهَبَ وَأَدَعَهُمْ حَتَّى أَرَاهُمْ يَضْحَكُونَ I dislike that I leave them until I see a smile on their faces. This was Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala and his khidmah for the deen, for the Islam, for the khalq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for this reason even after 1400 years of his martyrdom we are still remembering remembering him his legacy will still remain until yawm al qiyamah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to walk in his footsteps wa ma'alayya al-balagh assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah